So one of my friends came up to me on the playground and asked me if I would read a book and I said, of course. I asked her to go pick me a book from her classroom and she brought this one to me. So I'm going to read it to you today. And um, before we get started reading it, I want to remind you that when you're at home reading or you're looking in the library for a book in your classroom, or if you go to your local library or a bookstore, anywhere where you're looking for a book and you want to know if it's a book for you. You. Don't forget the just right book rule with your five fingers on your hand. So if you get um, zero or one word wrong while you are previewing the book, then that book is too easy for you. If you get four or five words wrong, then that book is too hard for you. So we want to try to aim for getting two or three words that we don't know. If we don't know two or three, then that's okay. Because that means it's going to be just right for us and that we can learn new words for the book. But if we don't know any of the words, then that's going to be really hard for us to read and understand. Make sure that you take the time to preview the book, whether it's read the back of the book to see what the book is about, which is really important in itself, or open it up, read the first couple of pages. If you think it's too easy, go ahead and put the book back. It's okay to get a new book, and that's really good that it's too easy for you. That means that you need to challenge yourself, and we learn when we challenge ourselves. But if it's too hard and you can't read it at all, go ahead and put that book back too, because you don't want to spend your time reading something that you're not going to understand. We can only learn from things that we understand. So please make sure that when you pick out a book that it's just right for you, okay? All right, so today my friend brought me this book and it's called Ruby the Copycat, which looks very interesting and believe it or not, I have not read this book, so I am really excited to see what it's about. Let's see what happens. Monday was Ruby's first day in Miss Hart's class. Class, this is Ruby, announced Miss Hart. Ruby, you may use the empty desk behind Angela. Angela is the girl with the pretty red bow in her hair. Angela smiled at Ruby. Ruby smiled at Angela's bow and tiptoed to her seat. I hope everyone had a pleasant weekend, said Miss Hart. Does anyone have something to share? I was the flower girl at my sister's wedding, said Angela. That's exciting, said Miss Hart. Ruby raised her hand halfway. I was the flower girl at my sister's wedding, too. What a coincidence, said Miss Hart. Angela turned and smiled at Ruby. Ruby smiled at the top of Angela's head. Class, please take out your reading books, said Miss Hart. At lunchtime, Ruby hopped all the way home on one foot. When Ruby came back to school, she was wearing a red bow in her hair. She slid into her seat behind Angela. I like your bow, whispered Angela. I like yours too, whispered Ruby. Class, please take out your math books, said Miss Hart. That's interesting that she goes home for lunch. We don't get to do that. I bet you she enjoys her lunch and takes her time. On Tuesday morning, Angela wore a sweater with daisies on it. At lunchtime, Ruby hopped home sideways. When Ruby came back to school after lunch, she was wearing a sweater with daisies on it. I like your sweater, whispered Angela. I like yours too, whispered Ruby. I don't know if you can see, but Angela's sweater really does have daisies on it and Ruby has safety pinned daisies onto hers. On Wednesday, Angela wore a hand-painted t-shirt with matching sneakers. After lunch, Ruby hopped back to school wearing a hand-painted t-shirt with matching sneakers. Why are you sitting like that? whispered Angela. Wet paint, said Ruby. On Thursday morning during sharing time, Angela modeled the flower girl dress she wore at her sister's wedding. Ruby modeled her flower girl dress too, right after lunch. 
Angela didn't whisper anything. Why do you think Angela didn't whisper anything? Hmm, that's interesting. By coincidence, on Friday morning, both girls wore red and lavender striped dresses. At lunchtime, Angela raced home. When Angela came back to school, she was wearing black. I can tell by Angela's face she looks sad. She's frowning, her eyes are looking down, her whole face is looking down. She's got her hands folded. I wonder why she's sad. On Friday afternoon, Miss Hart asked everyone to write a short poem. Who would like to read first? asked Miss Hart. Angela raised her hand. She stood by her desk and read, I had a cat I could not see because it stayed in back of me. It was a very loyal pet. It's sad we never really met. That was very good, said Miss Hart. Now who's next? Miss Hart looked around the room. Ruby? Ruby stood and recited slowly. I had a nice pet, who I never met, because it always stayed behind me, and I'm sure it was a cat too. Look at her teacher, look at Miss Hart. Have you seen your teacher do that before? Ruby smiled at the back of Angela's head. Someone whispered. Ruby sat down. What a coincidence, murmured Miss Hart. Angela scribbled something on a piece of paper. She passed it to Ruby. The note said, you copied me. I'm telling Miss Hart. P.S. I hate your hair that way. Do you really think Angela hates her hair that way? I don't think she hates Ruby at all. I think she's just frustrated that Ruby's copying her. Let's see what happens. Ruby buried her chin down in the collar of her blouse. A big tear rolled down her nose and plopped onto the note. When the bell rang, Miss Hart sent everyone home except for Ruby. Miss Hart closed the door of the schoolroom and sat on the edge of Ruby's desk. Ruby, dear, she said gently, you don't need to copy everything Angela does. You can be anything you want to be, but be Ruby first. I like Ruby. Miss Hart smiled at Ruby. Ruby smiled at Miss Hart's beautiful polished fingernails. Have a nice weekend, said Miss Hart. Have a nice weekend, said Ruby. Uh-oh, Ruby's looking at Miss Hart's fingernails. What do you think might happen? I think I have an idea. On Monday morning, Miss Hart said, I hope everyone had a pleasant weekend. I did. I went to the opera. Miss Hart looked around the room. Does anyone have anything, or I'm, I'm sorry, does anyone have something to share? Ruby waved her hand. Glued to every finger was a pink plastic fingernail. I went to the opera too, said Ruby. She did not, whispered Angela. Miss Hart folded her hands and looked very serious. Ruby, dear, said Miss Hart, did you do anything else this weekend? Ruby peeled off a fingernail. I hopped, said Ruby. The class giggled. Ruby's ears turned red. But I did. I hopped around the picnic table ten times. Ruby looked around the room. Watch. Ruby sprang from her desk. She hopped forward. She hopped backward. She hopped sideways and with both eyes shut. The class cheered and clapped their hands to the beat of Ruby's feet. Ruby was the best hopper they had ever seen. Miss Hart turned on the tape player and said, follow the leader, do the Ruby hop. So Ruby led the class around the room while everyone copied her. 
then at noon, Ruby and Angel hopped home for lunch. What a sweet ending. So it sounds like Ruby was new and she was nervous to her class and she thought by fitting in she would copy that um, the other students were doing. But then at the end she learned that it was her herself that people liked and she could be herself and people would still love her. And I think that is a great lesson we can all learn from. Be yourself. Don't copy what other people are doing and be strong when you are yourself because we will love you no matter what. Everybody has their strengths and I promise if you are yourself, we're going to love you even more. Okay, so if you have a book that you want me to read next time, let me know and I promise I will do my best to read it on here.